Hi guys, and welcome to this week's video. Uh, so I cannot believe it, but it's been four months uh, since I've done a last video. And in that time, uh, we've had baby Sebastian has arrived and we've been looking after him. It's obviously been manic and I haven't had a chance to do or even think about doing any videos, but I'm back. And today's video is about our thoughts or my thoughts about having a baby abroad here in France. And then over the next few weeks, hopefully we're going to be doing a bit more DIY stuff again. We've got the garage that we're transfer, transforming into a jeet. So there's lots of work planned for that. So hopefully there's going to be a few more videos over the next couple of weeks uh, showing you updates of what we're doing there. But as I said, today's video is about uh, our thoughts about having a baby abroad here in France. So having a baby abroad can be quite frightening. Um, and we were certainly worried about how it, it was going to pan out. Uh, we have some basic slash good French, but uh, we were worried about, I suppose, everything. It's our first baby, so we weren't sure what to expect. We obviously don't know what it's like to have a baby in the UK, so all we can do is talk about our experience about having a baby abroad here in France. So uh, the first thing I would say is the, the health care that we got was absolutely fantastic and was second to none really. So I have to say that first off, but what we were amazed about is the fact that although it was a public hospital and obviously everything was paid for under the French health care, what we did have is our own private room. Now, apparently we did ask, is this normal? And it is relatively normal across France for them to have your own private room. Uh, but if you don't have a private room, then you're in a room with one other person. So typically it sounded like you wouldn't be anywhere. You wouldn't be like, I know in the UK, they have wards and have maybe eight people in a ward or whatever. They don't seem to do it like that here in France. Uh, maximum is a, sounds like it's two people per room. But we were lucky enough to get a private room and that room consists of a bed for Lauren, uh, but also uh, a bathroom with a shower and toilet and a sink. Uh, so we had an ensuite basically and also they got a mattress which they put down on the floor for me which meant that I could then stay with Lauren 24-7. I was allowed to sleep in the room, I was allowed to eat in the room um, and that was absolutely invaluable because unfortunately Sebastian was um, siege or breach position which meant that we had to have a planned caesarean. It wasn't something that we particularly wanted but that's the way it was and uh, what it meant is that obviously Lauren had had a major operation and it's difficult looking after a baby anyway, let alone after a big operation. But with me there, it meant that the both of us could both bond with our newborn baby and also support each other. And it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I can't believe or I can't understand how anyone does it not having their partner to support them there pretty much 24 seven. And it certainly meant in the evenings when Lauren was very tired and, and the baby was sort of moaning and crying, I could wake up and I could look after him and try and let Lauren have a little bit of extra sleep. So that was absolutely fantastic. I'm glad that we had that opportunity or that was available to us here in France. We had midwives that came in and out to support us for everything that we needed. We had a buzzer that if we had any problems at any time, we could push the buzzer and literally within about a minute or two, a midwife would be there and they would be helping us. They taught us everything, which again was fantastic because we were newborn, new, newborn, new parents and hadn't been through the process before and they told taught us or helped us with the breastfeeding and how to bath the baby how to look after it how to clean it everything that we kind of I suppose needed to do, know even things like how to dress it properly I mean I you know we, we sort of didn't know there was sort of tips and tricks that they told us which was really really good there was even one night where we were sort of struggling to breastfeed and we called the buzzer to sort of find out if we were doing something wrong and the midwife came and she ended up spending about just over an hour with us trying different uh, breastfeeding techniques, showing us kind of what we can or can't do or what might help. And it was unbelievable. I mean, when the midwife went and me and Lauren sort of put the baby to sleep, we sort of were chatting to each other, winding down. And we sort of went, I can't believe she spent nearly over an hour just one-on-one -on -one 
teaching us, telling us what to do, showing us how to do things and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, that sort of level of care uh, was amazing and was fantastic. And as I said, said it many times, as new parents, it was absolutely brilliant. I can imagine if you have had kids before, then you've kind of learned a lot anyway. But for us, because it was our first child, um, having that kind of level of, of care and attention was, was absolutely fantastic. The other good thing about the hospital was the food. Um, I know people often complain about hospital food, but whether it was just because we were so tired and so hungry every time they bought food, I had to pay for my food on uh, as an extra. Lauren, obviously hers was included, um, but it did mean we could have kind of meal times together. And uh, the food was really, really fantastic. And typically uh, with the French, there was a, you know, a starter main dessert, cheese, cheese course as well. Um, and every day we'd have a different type of cheese. Every day we'd have a different meal. Lunch, dinner was different. Um, and it was, we were there for sort of just under a week. And again, we left, we were there sort of seven days, six nights. And uh, we actually ended up leaving because we said to the midwife, well, look, when, you know, when can we go home? Because we'd been there for, at that point, five nights and sort of said well you know as much as it was good and as as good as the care was it was slightly interrupting because every time you just about put the baby to sleep a midwife would come in and they had to weigh weigh him or do something or do something with Lauren check Lauren or whatever the case was and so of course it was difficult to find a routine because they had their own routine rather than creating a routine based around us so it got to the point where we were sort of like, actually, this is fantastic, but we kind of want to go home. So we said, oh, well, when, when can we go home? And she sort of said, well, when do you want to go home? We were like, I don't know, tomorrow. Um, and she said, okay, I'll speak to the pediatrician and we'll, we'll arrange it. And then the, the next morning, the pediatrician came round, checked everything, checked the baby, checked everything was okay and said, yes, okay, you can go home. And we sort of thought, well, if we hadn't have asked, how long would we have stayed here for? <laughs> and that we, when we came back here, we were speaking to the midwife, the local midwife that kind of came, came round. You know, and she said, oh, well, after a cesarean, you know, you could have easily stayed there for seven, seven to nine days, you know, um, depending on what you wanted. So we could have stayed there longer if we wanted to, but we didn't and we went home. But again, you know, I can't believe that that was an option again when I speak to friends back in the UK it seems even after a cesarean uh two or three days later or you, you're kind of kicked out or even later the same day I've heard so you know just having that kind of level of of care was was really good and you know really so much better than what we've heard of other experiences I can't say that's the experience of everywhere in the UK I don't know I'm just going on what people have told us but um yeah no it uh, it, it uh, there's certainly the level of care in france has been has been fantastic obviously then coming home uh, back here with a newborn was scary in itself um, and again we were lucky enough that we've got uh, the midwife that we had locally here they have sort of different midwives weirdly they have kind of like what they call freelance midwives that work in and around the area and they have their own office and they do a lot of the sort of pre-birth things and after birth things and then obviously in the hospital you've got midwives as well um, but obviously the midwife that we had pre-birth wasn't the midwife that was there when we were giving birth uh, that was in the hospital and the other team um, but of course when we came back home the midwife that was here came and saw Lauren and came to see us and I think she came like nearly every other day because of course we had questions we were worried about things we were messaging her saying oh we don't know about this we don't know about that and so she said oh it's okay I'll pop bound and have a look again she came to us um so I mean there was a couple of times at seven o'clock at night on her way back home she would pop in see us check everything was okay answer our questions uh, and again you know just gave us that real sense of sort of support that as again, maybe a lot of people get from their family. Um, obviously, being in France, not all of our family is here. Uh, Lauren's parents were staying for a while and they were absolutely invaluable in, in helping us and everything else. But sometimes you kind of want that impartial advice from 
a midwife, uh, you're sometimes not in the right frame of mind to take advice from family, whereas you kind of will do from a midwife. So it was really good to have that midwife there coming back, coming around to the house, checking everything was okay and, and stuff like that. Again, we talking about sort of family, uh, Lauren's parents, they were here, they came and looked after a lot of the household things. So they hoovered every week and cleaned our house and we obviously have wood burning fires to keep ourselves warm. So again, they would come and top up the wood and all this sort of stuff. So they were absolutely kind of fantastic in, in supporting us. And that was really, really good. But one thing that we have found that is, I suppose, a bit of a negative about being here in France, especially here in sort of a, a rural part of France, is that they didn't have quite so many kind of baby, I suppose, baby workshop, things like that. I know, again, speaking to people in the UK, they have coffee mornings or they have baby massage classes or sensory classes and things like that. And that gets you out of the house, but also meeting new people. And then you can kind of discuss and chat about kind of what your the ups and downs of being being a parent. Whereas here, I suppose it's probably because they all know each other because it's quite a small community anyway. And there's also probably not a, a lot of people being kind of uh, pregnant or giving birth at the same time. Uh, they don't really have those kind of classes. They don't really have those groups. We have, or Lauren's done a lot of research and we've now found some groups and we found some people there's some actually some people in the local uh, village here that have had a baby about three or four months before ours um, and so we're going to be meeting up with them uh, so there'll be people close to us and we've we have actually found a baby massage uh, group which we're going to in a couple of weeks so we're booked onto that so luckily we have started to find a bit of a community but that really has been us pushing it and again, speaking to people in the UK, I think in the UK that that's much more advanced. I think there's a lot more sort of support with with you know and joining other people who are who are who are parents as well. So I think that's probably been the one biggest negative about being here. Um, hopefully, we're going to start to overcome that now and find find new people. But uh, other than that, the actual healthcare of giving birth in a in a different country has been fantastic. Uh, as say. France has been superb. The language uh, was difficult, but we luckily we we've been we've been here for sort of just over five years or so, so our French was a lot better. Um, and actually, it was like having a, a submersive class, as I said. So uh, it wasn't too bad. But I can imagine if we'd moved here sort of the first year and sort of got pregnant and had a baby, I think we would have struggled a lot more. But all in all, I we've certainly found the experience very good healthcare wise I think support wise again we've probably certainly missed our families more than we have for the last five years because of having a baby and I think having a baby weirdly you want to see your family a lot more and of course being here in France if we do see our family they normally come and stay with us and that can be I suppose a bit too much having people staying in your house while you're also trying to look after a baby. So um, luckily, sort of Lauren's parents have, have been living kind of nearby and not actually in our house, which has given us the time to kind of get used to new our new family routine, our new family unit, but at the same time still, in, still having that support. And I can imagine if we we're back in the UK and we had sort of, um, you know, my got my got brothers and sisters with kids, and so is Lauren. Um, and I think if we'd kind of been a bit closer to either family back in the UK, that might have also been um, a lot help, you know, a bit more helpful and 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 good as well. So that's it for this week's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to our views about uh, giving birth in a foreign country. And maybe, hopefully, there's someone out there that is pregnant and is going to be going through the same uh, situation. And you might hopefully find what we've talked about useful. For those who aren't pregnant, who've had kids or whatever, maybe it was useful just to get a different perspective on having a baby abroad, having a baby in France, and maybe seeing the differences between kind of, I suppose, different countries, whether it's sort of USA, UK, Canada, wherever, and then having having a baby in France. I think each healthcare system in each country is very, very different, and they do things uh, 
sort of differently as well. So that's our experience. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos. I'm going to be cracking on with some DIY projects yet again. Uh, we've got the Jeet garage that we're converting to a second Jeet and we're going to be kicking that off next week and the first thing I'm going to be doing is installing a door in the actual garage opening. So that hopefully will be next week so stay tuned and from there we've got many more lots of projects and things like that to get that sheet up and running so don't forget to click the bell and i'll see you next time cheers guys bye